are Maciej Mikos and you're watching World Talks, where every word matters. Several countries have uh, called on their citizens to leave Lebanon immediately amongst the fears of Iranian retaliation against Israel after the killing of one of, uh, after the killing of Hamas political chief Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. Could the most recent crisis escalate into a broader conflict in the Middle East? Well, to talk about it, we're joined by expert on Middle Eastern affairs, Marcin Stryzynski from the Institute of Oriental Studies at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. Good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Well, on Sunday, Hezbollah launched uh, dozens of rockets at the town of Beit Hillel in uh, northern Israel, and they were all taken down by the uh, Israeli Iron Dome. N now, is this the retaliation Tehran was, uh, has been talking about, or are we to, to witness an attack on a much larger scale soon? Uh, that's an important question, a very good question. How and uh, what kind of uh, retaliation uh, we should expect? Uh, to note, uh, just a couple of months ago, because, because it was in uh, April, Iran uh, has already launched uh, some uh, missiles attacks against uh, Israel. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, the Iron Dome uh, uh, destroyed all missiles. Uh, actually in the in the sky uh, so now uh, a lot of speculations concern uh, the the measures uh, which will be which could be implemented by uh, Iran but not only Iran but also by uh, proxy or pro Iranian uh, groups in the in the region uh, to remember in Yemen uh, in Iraq in Syria and etc uh, of course, the whole uh, situation reflects uh, reflects uh, complex conditions and uh, and uh, uh, conditions in the in the Middle East, uh, because. Uh, uh, since uh, 2023, we have uh, the completely new situation in the region, especially after uh, the trust or uh, the trust or, or return of diplomatic relations between Iran and the Gulf states. Uh, so, in this uh, context, uh, Israel became, um, let's say, alone or abandoned uh, because uh, Western uh, policy reflected kind of alliance uh, between uh, Sunni Gulf states, Israel and Iran. Now we have uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, hostility, especially between uh, Tel Aviv and Tehran. And, but uh, other states in the region are quite uh, 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 avoid to be implemented once again in this conflict like it was in, in the past. Of course, it's a long story. We don't have time to, uh, to, to talk uh, with, uh, about details uh, in, this, in this regard. Right, so what do you think it will be? Will it be an attack from, uh, from Iran, just, just like the one we witnessed in, in April, which you just mentioned? Uh, or will it be an attack by its, uh, by its proxies? Well, both attacks uh, are, well, I would say, failed to... Uh, will fail, obviously, because uh, yeah. they've, they've tried for so many times now and uh, it hasn't been successful at all. Uh, yes, you are right. But uh, just to remember, uh, a couple of days ago, we had uh, an attack uh, uh, launched by uh, Houthi in Yemen, and they launched uh, uh, drones attack against Eilat in Israel. So just uh, it's uh, uh, the uh, equipment are uh, more and more uh, sophisticated because uh, we have it, it reached uh, uh, the city, which is uh, uh, more than uh, 3,000 kilometers uh, from uh, Yemen. So it shows that uh, the Iran and its uh, proxies, uh, they have uh, more and more sophisticated weapons and equipment. It's not like in the past. So uh, uh, we still don't know uh, what kind of weapons and what kind of measures or tools uh, could be implemented by uh, the hostile, hostile uh, sites. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, the, um, the April attack you, uh, you mentioned before, uh, well, it was supposed to be a strong answer um, to, 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 to yet another uh, attack by, uh, by Israel. It failed. Now, I'm wondering, how does it affect the, the regime of Ayatollahs in, in Iran? 
uh, you mean uh, the reactions? Yes, yes. Uh, what I mean is that uh, they vow to retaliate and they re their retaliation fails every single time. So I'm, I'm wondering whether the, uh, the society, whether the people of, uh, of, of Iran, uh, well, probably start to change yeah. their minds about the, the, the regime. Uh, I don't think so because it's still, uh, uh, it's still, uh, uh, of course, it's uh, uh, also affecting all all uh, uh, those attacks affecting uh, internal policy and uh, uh, local societies. Uh, although, as you mentioned, you are absolutely right that uh, all attacks fail because of the Iron Dome. Uh, but uh, even uh, we should remember that in the Middle East, uh, even some symbolic uh, gesture. Uh, are important. Uh, you know, missiles, uh, missiles above uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, or Quds, as it's called in, in Arabic, uh, was very important in April because some missiles uh, reached uh, Jerusalem. So, although they didn't, uh, uh, they, they didn't make any, didn't make any destruction inside uh, Jerusalem. However, it was very symbolic for for the uh, public opinion in the Middle East. So in Western, of course, we have a completely different perspective, uh, especially military or uh, logistic perspective. But uh, inside the Middle East, it's completely uh, different. But still, we, st we, we don't know actually uh, what kind of sophisticated weapons uh, hold uh, uh, Iran uh, and uh, um, Houthi, as I mentioned, Yemen Houthi. Uh, they, they, a couple of years ago, they had very weak uh, weapon, uh, although. Uh, uh, now they, they can reach, uh, for instance, they can reach uh, Israel, and uh, and uh, and they reach some targets anyway. Although the Iron Dome. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Iran claims that uh, Ismail uh, Ismail Haniyeh has been uh, killed um, by a rocket launcher shot uh, with, with a shot from outside of his apartment. Uh, before that, we heard a. Uh, Mm, a, a story about a bomb being planted the, uh, some months ago. Well, we don't know which, uh, which one is, uh, is true, but uh, it clearly shows that Iran is easily penetrated by its enemies, doesn't it? Uh, yes, uh, you are right, uh, because just uh, today we hear that uh, uh, Iran detained uh, around 20 persons involved in the attack. So we still don't know, but some of them are Iranian, uh, I'm sure they are Iranians. So uh, it means that, of course, it's penetrated, uh, but because it's the, uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, for Israel is the main uh, enemy in the region. It was also the main enemy. Uh, Ira uh, I Israel uh, counted uh, and relied on this uh, alliance with uh, neighboring states like uh, Saudi Arabia. So that's why we have the Abraham uh, Accords. But uh, uh, now I think uh, that uh, the situation, especially tragic situation in, in the Gaza Strip, completely changed this uh, this uh, this objective, this Western objective. Uh, that's why a couple of weeks ago we had also last week even we had this meeting and negotiation. Uh, under the auspices of China between uh, rival side, uh, Palestinian rival side, I mean Fatah and uh, Hamas. So it also shows that we have other sides involved uh, in the region as well. All right, and we have uh, the US with its uh, fleet uh, in, the, in, in the region. And I'm wondering whether it's uh, de-escalating the, uh, the potential uh, conflict, because on, on one hand, of course, Tehran would be afraid uh, to, to attack Israel, uh, having, um, having um, the U.S. Uh, army close to its borders. But then on the other, Tehran accused the U.S. of uh, helping Israel in, uh, in assassinating uh, Ismail Haniyeh. So uh, is it de-escalating or rather escalating the conflict? Uh... According to the sources in the Middle East, Arabic sources and public Arabic public opinion or Muslim Arabic public opinion, we have escalation of the conflict. 
especially after the death of uh, uh, the leader, as you mentioned, Hania. So we have the escalation. Uh, we had uh, in, in the, this uh, this uh, incident happened during negotiations uh, between uh, Israel and uh, and Hamas in Cairo, for instance, in Egypt. So uh, we have escalations. Everyone is waiting the response uh, from Iran. Uh, next week we have uh, 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 important holidays in Israel. Some Jewish holidays. Days, uh, the, the commemorating the destruction of the first uh, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, so it's like uh, happened in 7th uh, October. It was also the, the commemoration of the Yom Kippur War. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, besides, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, local sites uh, trust. Uh, still trusts uh, the United States. I think that uh, that's why we have this involvement of China, for instance. It's first time China is uh, it's so directly involved uh, in talks and negotiations between rival sides uh, inside Palestine. Uh, and besides, we have Israel uh, uh, that uh, declares uh, from the beginning that it aims at uh, uh, destruction of uh, Hamas bases. And uh, as we say, uh, they they follow, they, they follow, or so uh, uh, Israel army follows uh, this uh, objective. Uh, so uh, we have explanations, as you mentioned just uh, at the beginning. Uh, we have many countries involved: Lebanon. We have. Uh, 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 Syria as well, Iraq, we have also Yemen. Uh, still, we don't know how to react, but uh, other uh, sides uh in the region, but I think that they, won't, they as I mentioned, they will avoid uh, straight and direct involvement in the conflict. So it means it will be in favor to, for, to, uh, to uh, proxy or pro-Iranian side. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Syria, Lebanon, and uh, Yemen also involved in uh, in this huge potential conflict. And I'm wondering whether the U.S. the uh, presidential campaign can afford such a conflict in the Middle East. Huh. That's a very good question, an important question, in fact, uh, because uh, just to note that uh, 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 Trump. For instance, President Trump, one of his first visits in the region was in Saudi Arabia, for instance, in 2000, uh, 2017. I remember because I worked at that time in uh, Saudi Arabia, so I remember. And in fact, he proposed a plan uh, regarding the Middle East. As I mentioned, it was an alliance between a Sunni state, I mean, Gulf states like Saudi Arabia, Emirates. That's why we have this Abraham Accord. And uh, toward, uh, and Israel towards the main enemy, Iran. But actually, we see that after the conflict in, in Gaza Strip, this concept uh, failed. Uh, although, uh, it, if it could be implemented, it will succeed. And in fact, Iran will be the uh, last, it will be uh, abundant, completely abundant. Now, in fact, in my opinion, Israel is abundant a little bit. Uh, that's why Houthi, uh, they don't have any problems to reach with drones, to reach uh, Eilat in Israel without any uh, problems from, uh, from uh, uh, previous uh, hostiles like Saudi Arabia. Yes, so that's mm -hmm. why I think in West, in the West, we completely don't understand this, uh, this, uh, this new circumstances and new order, which is, uh, which is creating, uh, uh, or which is establishing uh, 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 now in, in the Middle East. Well, we can only hope that the situation in the Middle East can uh, will stabilize. But as you said, uh, the next few days will uh, will uh, tell us uh, more and. Uh, we should be wary about the um, the, the Jewish uh, holiday you uh, mentioned. Uh, Marcin Stoszyński from the Institute of Oriental Studies at the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań was our guest tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, bye bye. Thank you. Have a nice. And thank you for watching and stay with us for more here on uh, TVP World.